Welcome to How I Do It. Today I'm going to show you how I installed programmable LEDs on my house for all year round decoration. I started out by trimming some of the shrubs at the corners of my house to clear access to the gutters to easily attach the LEDs. I will post links in the description to all of the hardware that I purchased in order to make this system work. Here you'll see the clips that are 3D printed. I actually printed these clips last year from Thingiverse for my old icicle Christmas lights. They worked great they fit the gutters nice and snug. It was the first time in six years that I didn't have Christmas lights get blown off of the gutters. These clips turned out to work very well for the LED strip, although I still plan to design and print new clips. These just happen to be what I had for now. The most important thing to keep in mind while attaching these LEDs into the clips or whatever specific hanger attachment that you use, the biggest thing to keep in mind is you want to keep them snug in between, otherwise it gives room for the lines to flex, possibly breaking solder joints on the flexible strips. While they are flexible, they are not infinitely flexible. Just in case you're not familiar with them, a WS2812 LED is a LED that has an integrated circuit on it that makes that one LED addressable. When you put them together with multiple and the data lines connected to from one to the next, you get networked LEDs. The first one's address is number one all the way to your last one. In my case, that was 457. Here you can see me hooking another clip on the gutter and sticking the LED strip in. Now the one thing I decided to do is because these clips were not designed for the flexible strips, they were designed to have the weight of the Christmas lights hanging in them, I decided to take some zip ties for temporarily until I print the new clips to secure the LED strips into the clips. Here you'll see while I was doing this work I had my nephew Shane giving me a hand. When you're working on a roof it's always helpful to have somebody on the ground to not only hand you stuff but when you're working on a roof anything could happen. In a heartbeat you could slip and fall and fall off the roof. Um, you really should never work on a roof when without someone knowing that you're up on the roof working. Usually when I go up on my roof I let my wife know. Now I'm just hooking up the last clip on this gutter and then um, while I'm up here I saw that the gutters were a little full of leaves obviously so perfect timing to clean them out. The tree you see off there on the right hand side is a some kind of gum tree and it has these little spiky balls that my wife and I both despise. They fill up the gutters, they ting off the house and the metal uh, weather guards on the windows. They're just super annoying. So here I'm going to fasten the last one with a zip tie. Now what you see me doing is I'm working the string of LEDs down through the downspout that drops down to the next gutter. Um, when I had the icicle lights I used to just run them along the outside of the gutter and it just looked like one big icicle. I didn't want that with the LED strip so here you see I dropped it down through. It comes out the bottom and then we'll pop the downspout back into place after we get them all put on. Here's the connectors that the flexible strips I purchased came with. You see the two spare, the black and red wire there, that is for tying in auxiliary power when you need additional power. In my case I did need additional power. 
here you see the time lapse of us putting the strings on. Um, as I was saying with the additional power, the LED strips need additional 5 volt power taps in the middle of the string in order to, to supply enough 5 volt power throughout due to voltage drop across the LED strips and the wiring. Here you see I'm drilling a hole out through from my attic out through the siding. Um, in my case I'm installing these lights permanently. They will be used all year round since they are RGB. We can change the colors of them. They've got a red, green, and blue LED in each one. Here you see me doing the wiring connections. The most important thing with this is whatever type of wire you use, you match up on the LED strips. You'll have a positive 5 volt, negative 5 volt, and a data line. The data line is the most critical one that's susceptible to noise from radio interference and other things. Here you'll see me hooking up the power supply. This power supply takes your household wall outlet and converts it to 5 volts DC. A lot like a cell phone charger, except a cell phone charger is capable of 1 to 2, maybe 3 amps. This is a 40 amp or 200 watt power supply. Uh, it's similar to what's in your computer. Um, this will supply the 5 volt power to the Arduino and the LED strips. Now I had to make the three runs to the middle and two ends of the LED strips in order for all the LEDs to be able to go on to full brightness. Here you'll see a quick demonstration of the LED patterns that I programmed. Now these are RGB or red, green, and blue LEDs. So they're capable of a ton of colors. Here you're seeing blue and white just because that's my wife's favorite colors when it comes to Christmas time um, for Christmas lights on the house. And I have to agree, LEDs create a shade of blue that just is unbeaten by anything else I've ever seen. But at the end of this you'll see a demonstration where the LEDs go to RGB values instead. Um, I have an R a Raspberry Pi hooked up to the Arduino that allows me to upload new code to the LEDs from anywhere. Um, so we're going to use these LEDs for other holidays such as St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, 4th of July, L Labor Day, Memorial Day, things like that. Um, we'll change the colors of them. And we've also agreed since we're Ravens fans, when the Ravens win, the house will go purple. It'll be the same pattern you see here for the Ravens games, but the lights will light up purple. There are some specific details that I left out, such as wire collars or connections to the LEDs due to the variations in the LEDs available for purchase. If you have any questions, you can feel free to find me on Twitter. My handle is at Country Cowboy, or you can find me on Instagram. My handle is Matthew Flinchball. I'm constantly posting videos and pictures of upcoming projects. You can find those and other social media links in the description below, as well as links to where to find the materials used and the resources used in this video. You will also find in the description below a link to the full length video of the animation on my personal YouTube channel. This video was sped up to two and a half times its normal speed. I hope you like this video. If you do, please hit the likes button below. If you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified immediately when new videos are uploaded, once you subscribe, hit the bell and that will turn on email notifications to let you know immediately when a new video is uploaded. Thank you for watching.